Today's Bible study is titled Expectations of Resting to Walk, Part 1. Due to many years of a frustrated walk, any time I now hear about the walk of a believer the member of the body of Christ, I must go back and frame that walk as it is summarized in the overall teaching of the Apostle Paul and particularly in his Ephesian epistle. Like so many of the Apostles' letters, this Ephesian epistle falls into two sections, a doctrinal and a practical. The doctrinal section, chapters 1 to 3, is concerned mainly with the great truths and facts of the redemption which God has accomplished in Christ for and in the body of Christ. The practical section, chapters 4 to 6, prefaced by the doctrinal, then goes on to present the expectations that members of the body of Christ can and should have regarding their lives in Christ, in rested belief of the truths taught in 1 to 3. A few key words in Ephesians direct us to how this is all supposed to work. These are that you walk and stand. Today we'll look at sit, the believer's position in Christ. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 verses 4 to 7 Note that our position of rest in Christ sit is because God is rich in mercy and has great love by which he loved us, past tense. As a result, he, past tense, hath quickened us together with Christ, made alive via resurrection power, via our union with Christ in the body of Christ. But God did not stop there. For as Christ has died and has risen and has ascended into heaven and is now sat down at the right hand of the Father, even so God made, past tense, believers to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we even have instruction here as to why God has, past tense, done all of this. Namely it is, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Example, it is so he can show us off in ages to come to his glory. So, a believer's life does not begin with a focus on much activity, rather in rested belief of the truth of who you are in Christ. Believer rest in him. Thank you for listening to today's Bible study.